Hey guys, welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking about SEO and SEO is a foundation inside of your marketing campaign. So whether you're a small business or a big marketing firm, you need to know about SEO. So stick around and we'll get started going over SEO and how you can start profiting from it. If you get to hear me now. Get to hear me now. Do I have to approve those graphics? We looked at them the other day. The most confusing thing that people come to us and ask us about when we're talking to prospects is SEO. Although LinkedIn marketing, social media marketing, stuff like that, B2B businesses coming to us and asking us what should they do because they've heard all these different things, that would be number two. Number one, SEO. So in this video, we're just going to talk about the basics, high level. We're not going to get into the weeds. We can do that on a separate video and talk the nerd talk for you, talking about tags and, and the coding that goes behind it. But strictly the basics, there's two main sections of SEO. There's on-page or on-site and off-page or off-site. So what do those mean? On-page, on-site is what's on your website. That's what a developer has to code into it. So it's your meta title, your, your meta description, H tags and all the stuff that goes into the website. A lot of times when people hire agencies to redo their website, they don't actually perform and optimize the website with their on-page SEO. So the meta title and meta description, how do you know what yours is? Without coming to an agency like ours or going to an agency and asking for an audit, which sometimes you have to pay for, sometimes you get for free, without looking, go to your website and at the tab of your browser, if you hover over it, you're gonna see words there. That's your meta title. Most companies will have things where it says home dash and then the company name, or it'll say something that they do, whether it's a service or a product, it'll use that phrase and then it'll say dash the company name. The ones that are doing it right, it'll be a long phrase with, with multiple themes built into it. So you can go to any page of your website, click on that page and then look in the tab and you can do the same thing for your competitors and we'll get into that. The, the meta title is basically you're telling Google this is what the f keyword phrase is that you're trying to go after for that page of your website. You want your home page to be the highest level theme or something more general and then each of your internal pages is ranking for a specific keyword theme or phrase that's supporting it and relevant but it's more of a niche into that specific product or service. So you need to look at your meta titles to see if you want to just glance at it, you can know roughly, this is very rough, how is your on-page SEO. Another trick that we often tell people is, if you type, go into Google, go into the Google, and type in site, and then colon, and put your URL. So for, for if your URL is abccompany.com, you just put site, colon, abccompany.com, and hit search. What that's gonna do is it's gonna bring up all the results of all the pages that are indexed with Google. And when you, when you look into those indexed pages, this, it's roughly gonna show you if somebody searched for that keyword theme and that page shows up in the results, this is roughly what it's gonna look like. You're gonna see your meta title. Right below that is gonna be your description. You're gonna be able to see if it's optimized. You're gonna be able to see if there's a dot, 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 which means that there's too much text there and you'll be able to go through your pages and you can quickly see, is your about us page, does it say about us? Or does it say, you know, something like manufacturing services specialist dash your company name or manufacturing service specialist in the Northeast or whatever it is that you do. You don't want things to be who we are, about us, what we do, our company, contact us. You don't want it to say that. If it does say that, then you need to optimize your on-page SEO. So that's one aspect of it, just to get a quick glance. You can go to our site. We've got a, a free audit tool that can give you a rough idea. It's just done really quick, shows on the screen. Or if you wanna shoot us an email, sales at fivefold.agency, we can run an audit um, at, at a very high level just to give you an idea. But doing it yourself, do that, check that out. The off-page or off-site side of SEO is basically when you create content, and you're creating backlinks from other companies that are linking back to your website, that is off of your site. So if you can find an influencer or a publisher or somebody that's got a high domain authority site, going ideally somebody like Forbes, which is very difficult to get onto, but think that type of level. If they're linking back to you, 
they're telling Google that they trust you, therefore Google's gonna look at your site and start ranking your pages higher. Now backlinking has been something that back 10 years ago, people used to just backlink the hell out of their website to all of these different social channels, all these forums and, and blog posts and all sorts of crazy stuff and you get thousands of backlinks and that was a way to kind of hack SEO. Google got smart to it, now you get penalized for that stuff. So you don't wanna go backlink crazy if you talk to an SEO company or a freelancer or anybody that is that you use and they say they're gonna create thousands of backlinks every year for you and that's gonna drive you up, it, it may temporarily push you in the right direction but then you will be penalized once Google catches up to it. So don't go to the crazy backlink uh, direction. Try and get high quality backlinks from people relevant in your industry, articles, publications, things like that. So now we know what the SEO is, on page, on site, off page, off site. Now we're gonna look at how do you also look at what is your current organic rankings and positions. One thing you can do, come to an agency like ours, we, can, we have tools that are at our disposal so to where we can look at what is your current organic traffic, how much are you getting a month, how are they getting there, what are the keywords and themes. We can do that for you. If you wanted to look, if you know Google Analytics, I'm sure most companies are gonna have it set up on their site. Go into your Google Analytics account, do a YouTube search and try and figure out your organic traffic. There's tons of videos out there that'll show you exactly where you should go in Google Analytics, but that's where you're gonna wanna go. You wanna see how much monthly traffic are you getting to your site. If it's 200 people a month are coming to your site out of 1,000 total traffic, that means organic SEO is contributing 20% of your total monthly traffic. Now, if you want to look at your competitors, you're not gonna be able to do that on your own. You'd have to come to an agency like ours to where we can have the tools to do that and we can basically with all of our clients, when we talk to them in the beginning, we ask them who are their top five competitors from two standpoints, because there's two types of competition. There's one, the people that you compete with on a project, service, price, whatever. You come across them, you're going after one customer, so are they, you hear their name. That's one level of competition. The other side of competition is with Google and search. So even though you may never compete with when somebody searches the, the service that you offer or the product, you may never physically compete with a person that's above you or right below you, but you are competing from a search standpoint. You may not hear their name, but in Google's eyes, you are competing. So you wanna break out those two levels of competition. S reverse engineer your own service or product and search for what you think it is that people would search for. Look at those rankings of who's coming up. Go to those competitors' websites. Look at their meta title and description and hover on the tab. Do a site colon URL search for them. See how they have their stuff set up. And you can start to see that if they're in the top positions and it's a highly sought after keyword where it's more than a few hundred searches a month in the US, then they probably have their stuff together and it's probably organized somewhat correctly. So it's one way for you to look at the competition and then you don't need to reinvent this wheel. Just look at the way that they did it and start to think how you can do it similarly don't directly copy them, but do it similarly because they're probably onto something. What we're able to do is, with competition is rip all the skeletons out of the closet. We can tell you what percentage of the organic traffic goes into their site, what is the position, what is the phrase, what is the theme they're going after. We can provide all that to you in an audit and, and most agencies can do that. So if you want an in-depth look, go down that path, but if not, just do the quick search. Once you've figured out that competition, you start to see the phrases, the themes that they're going after. Now you're gonna, gonna wanna try and figure out your own keyword themes and phrases. So what you think you might search and put into Google to search for may not be what somebody else is. So you can't put your, your own mindset into it too strongly and you can't ask three people what they would search for and just take that as what everybody would be doing. So what you wanna do is start typing into the search of what you think the phrase would be. Before you hit enter, look at what the suggested searches are. Google shows it, it's gonna be some sort of drop down. Those are things that are, that are frequently searched for. I'm not saying that those things are 10,000 searches a month, but those are just things that are more frequently than whatever it is that you're typing in where Google's trying to say, this is what I think that you're doing. That's one way to look at some themes and phrases that you could be going after. Or after you do search, scroll all the way down to the bottom. Below the bottom ads on every Google search, you will see other suggested keyword phrases. Those are other things that Google knows. People search for whatever you search for. Here's other things that they search for as well. 
So you can start to develop this, this idea of what should your keyword themes and phrases be. Don't look at it from just a high level overview of like, this is my service that I do. You have to break down each service individually. You have to have a page for each of your services and then search for those services individually and figure out your themes and phrases for each of those pages. In yesterday's video, we talked about distributing our content, but let's reverse that back and think about how do you come up with those titles or themes or the ideas behind what is the piece of content that you're gonna write for. So there's basically two areas that we break this into, is that there's, there's high value content that you're gonna to deliver to your target demographic. These are things that they're gonna to want to really engage on and read. On the flip side of it, there's things that people search for that have a high SEO value that will give you rankings and positions and juice to push towards your site that maybe that, that influencer decision maker would think that that article or that piece of content is below them or it's too low level or you may think that it's not valuable to them, but from an SEO standpoint, it is extremely valuable. So when you're thinking about topics, think about the basics of what is this? How do you do that? And think very, very basic. That should be one category of content. And then think what is the most value that I can give to this customer, to this potential customer, to my target demographic? What type of content would really, they can take it right now, do something right now, and it's at a very niche level. That's another column of your content. And what you wanna do is blend those two together and you kinda of wanna play hopscotch with them towards back and forth where you're doing a piece that's highly targeted and valuable and a piece that's more focused on SEO and do that back and forth throughout the months and, and do the consistency like we talked about yesterday and rinse and repeat. That'll give you that well-balanced plan to where you're pushing on SEO, but then you're also delivering good content. And if you've done the first steps that we talked about here and you've made those changes to your site and looked at it, then you can really start to push SEO further along and have it actually work for you to where you've got organic traffic, People are searching for what you do, and then they come to your site. Now, whether or not your site sucks once they get there, that's a whole different other story. But the first step is identifying the traffic, making sure that you understand what it is that they're trying to go after, and bringing them into your funnel. So now I've given you the basics of how SEO works. So now you gotta take this information and go do something with it instead of procrastinating. If you like the video, hit that like button. See you on the next one. Get to hear me now